this video, we'll create our payment success and payment failure pages for our e-commerce app with Django and Python. Hey guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com. And in the last video, we took the PayPal IPN stuff and then added it to our database, to our orders model. In this video, we then want to redirect to a success or a failure page based on whether or not the payment was a success or failure. And we've already got these pages built, but they're just blank white pages that say success or failure. So we'll build those out. We'll also delete our shopping cart that's still kind of rattling around. We'll do that in this video as well. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor in the Get Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this Django e-commerce series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So let's very quickly look at our URLs.py file in our payment app here. And way back when we created these two pages, payment success and payment failed. And we haven't done anything with them. So just really quickly, let's just take a look at these just to refresh our memories, what we have here. Uh, make sure you've got your ngrok thing set up and redone. So if you've turned off the app for a while and then restarted again, you have to generate a new URL, go back and watch the videos on the, that ngrok stuff. Uh, but here I can just pass in, let's see, that's gonna be payment success. No, that's gonna be probably payment slash payment success. There we go. And so when we go to PayPal, make our payment and everything works, the app redirects to this payment success page. And you can see it just says payment success. That's no good. We've also got a payment underscore failure page, I think. Uh, let's see, what did we call that? Payment failed. Okay. And it's going to be the same thing. It's just going to be a white screen that says payment failed. So we want to build out these two pages in this video and also our shopping cart is still rattling around with stuff after the order is completed. Now the database shopping cart gets deleted if the user's logged in, but the regular just shopping cart that's sort of floating in the browser, that doesn't get deleted. So we obviously want to delete that now if we hit the payment success page, not the payment failure page. Okay, let's build this out real quick. Let's head over to our code and look in our payment slash templates slash payment, and we've got, let's see, payment failed and payment success. And let me just grab, I don't know, billing order. I'm just gonna copy all of this and head over to our payment success page. And let me just paste all of this in. And here it says billing info. Let's have this say payment success. And here, let's say your order is complete or something. Right. And then here we've got, let's see, a card. What do we want here? We want this container and we want this row and we probably want this offset thing so that it's sort of centered. Uh, but let's get rid of all the rest of this stuff. In fact, I don't even know what all this is. Let's just, uh, boom. Yeah, let's click on this. Okay. So let's get rid of all of this. Uh, what else do we have? Hard stuff. Shipping info, let's get rid of all of that, and that, and that. This is probably not a great one to copy. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's just get rid of all this stuff. There we go. Uh, and here, uh, this is some stuff. <laughs> all right, so let's go ahead and copy this and just take a look and see what we have here. Okay, so we've got payment success. We can see our cart still has stuff in it. This is some stuff. I don't know what we want to put here. Maybe we want to put like an invoice. We can build that out. Uh, maybe we want to put like, hey, this is a summary of your order. We could build that out. Uh, for now, I think we're just going to leave this like this until we decide exactly what we want to do. So what I am going to do is grab a bunch of these and let's put an and NBSP line break and just paste in a few of these. Come back over here, just for good measure to push that down a little bit, just for neurotic, aesthetic reasons at the moment. Okay, good enough. So we've got our payment success page. Let's go ahead and copy this. I'm just gonna copy this whole thing and let's open up our payment failed page and pop that in there. And let's say payment failed. Maybe we don't want an exclamation point. Uh, let's say, there was a problem. And down here, let's just say uh, there was a problem processing your orders. Please try again. I don't know, whatever you want. So, all right, let's 
take a look at this. So that was what? Payment failed. All right, so payment failed. There was a problem. There was a problem with your order. Please try again. Good enough for now. Like I said, we may fiddle around with this. Now we also want to delete our cart. So actually, what is in our cart? I don't even remember. <laughs> All right, we've got one Python programming journal book in our cart. So for our payment success page, we want to delete the cart, obviously. So if we come back over here, uh, we're going to come into our views.py file. And if we come down, let's see, way down at the bottom, here's our two views for our payment success and our payment fail. We set this up ages ago. And you can see there's nothing there. It's just redirecting to the page. So what we want to do here is delete the browser cart. Because remember earlier, we deleted the database. So if you've forgotten how we set this up, we've set it up to where if you're logged in, we're saving the cart to the database under your name so that if you log out and log back in later on, that cart persists no matter what computer you're on. But we also have sort of in the background the original shopping cart that saves as a cookie on your web browser. And that cookie then gets sort of transformed into the thing that we save in the database. But the cookie still exists in case you want to add more things or whatever. So that shopping cart we need to delete. So we did that earlier in some video. Let's see. Not in our billing info, but maybe it was there a process. Yeah, process order. So first we need to get the cart. So this is how we get the cart. So let me just copy all of that. And first get the cart. And we can do that like that. Don't need a tab there or I should say can't have a tab there. So here's our actual cart. So let's come back up to the process order function here. And I think it was here where we deleted that. Here we're getting the info from the cart. Ah, yeah, here we are deleting the cart. So there we go. And we deleted the stuff from the database in this function too, but we're not calling this anymore because of the way we set the system up. We used to have it go from the uh, shipping to the billing to the process. Now we're doing the shipping to the billing to PayPal. So we kind of skip this process order thing. We'll clean that up later. But I think that should do it. So and if we look at our billing, this is where all the magic happens for PayPal. We've been working on this function for a while here. So here you do the PayPal stuff. Here's the PayPal form. And then if the user is logged in, we're creating an order. And then getting the stuff from the cart and then adding that to the order that we're saving to the database. And then we're deleting the cart that's in the database because we're adding that as an order. So we don't need to save it as the cart, right? Plus they're clicking the button here anyway. So we're already deleting the database here. Maybe we want to move this to our process order thing. Maybe not. We'll think about that and make a decision on that later. But for now, like I said, we just need to get rid of that shopping cart, the browser one. So let's come down to our payment success thing and let's just paste this in. So this is all tabbed wrong. So we need to pop that over. Okay. And this is just for key in the list request session keys. Um, do we even need this? Let's see. We're getting the, we're pulling the session right out there. Yeah. I don't think we even actually need this. Okay. Well. It's there. We'll leave it there for now. <laughs> All right. That looks good. So let's go ahead and save this. And we don't even have to go through this system. We can just come back to this page and reload and see if that worked. Yep. Boop. It's gone. All right. So, okay. So that looks good. Now let's give this the ultimate test here. Let's add a couple of these books, add those to cart. And maybe we want uh, one of these books. Add that to cart. We got a couple of items in our cart. Let's come down here and check out. Let's run through the whole thing, put in some shipping info. <laughs> there we go. Continue to billing. There we go. Now we'll probably clean this up as well, or we may use it for Stripe. I haven't decided yet, but now let's try this PayPal thing. So we want to log into our PayPal test account to pay for this and use our PayPal balance, whatever. Complete the purchase. Now we're also going to need to fiddle with this. I don't love this return to merchant button because sometimes people won't click on it. And if they don't click on it, bad things happen. Like the transaction ID doesn't get added. The invoice ID, whatever, doesn't get added to our database if they don't click this button. So we need to set up something that automatically redirects whether or not they click this button or not specifically 
maybe doesn't even give them the chance to click the button, just redirects automatically. We'll talk about that probably maybe in the next video or so. But for now, we can click this return to merchant button and boom, it goes to the payment success page, our cart updated. Everything seems to have worked correctly and there we go. Fairly simple and you'll notice PayPal has appended some stuff. So we have a payer ID that might be useful for something. We can pull that out of that URL if we wanted to. Um, but for now, this is looking good. All right, so we've got our payment success page, our payment failed page, our cart gets deleted when the order gets processed, and we are good to go. So that's all for this video. My name is John Elder from Codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.